Are you okay? Oh. That didn't last very long. Hey guys, welcome back. So uh, today we're doing a little bit of a different vlog for the day. Um, we had kind of a crazy morning, so we switched things up. I had to go do a food run. Gabby did all the uh, prep and everything already and got the bowls and whatnot. So right now uh, we'll go ahead and show you the bowls and enrichment we plan on doing today. So for enrichment, we've got uh, some some of these frozen blocks of ice with a bunch of veggies in there frozen into it. So we got these two and then we have two of these over here, a sweet potato and carrot in there. And so those will be good for the coatis, the pigs. Uh, we can see, you know, who else we end up with. Uh, you want to talk about what you made in there? Oh my gosh, there's so much. I don't know. Basically what I usually do, a mixture of it. And then I added some bee pollen and we started doing some salmon oil. So we have salmon well, oil now. I know people are going to ask uh, what is everything like, give us a run we have some monkey biscuits and omnivore diet soaked in um what is it soaked in coconut water sweet potato baby food bananas just some fruit and egg um, some lettuce and then for the foxes we have a mixture of like veggies fruits uh ground chicken for the red foxes ground rabbit and insects for the fennec fox this is for asami just a bunch of vegetables freeze-dried raw turkey bee pollen again salmon oil little bugs fruits veggies uh, and then we have some toys so one of these toys is a fake phone for lola and look because she's obsessed with trying to steal her phones <laughs> that's cute so is that like made for babies yeah you think she's just gonna destroy that probably i don't know maybe it needs to be charged but yeah it oh my gosh i have bee pollen all under my nails sorry guys it's so <laughs> gross but yeah maybe it has to be charged but it's a fake phone for Lola because she's obsessed with phones. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and drive our little fancy golf cart. Got everything loaded up in the back. So we'll just drive this on over. Everything's covered in leaves though. We had a big storm roll through, so golf cart's covered in leaves, everything. Gonna have to use a blower. And we have to do Asami's bedding today. Oh yeah, yeah. I picked up peat moss uh, this morning too, so we'll put some of that down for Asami. But, um, so first stop is gonna be Jet over here. Asami. Excuse me. <laughs> Climbing up the door. Where did she sleep last night? In bed with us. Yeah. Asami mommy. She literally slept in the bed with us. I cuddled with her all night. I got no sleep. <laughs> I slept right through it. I did not. Here, you pass that through. There you go. What you gonna eat first, huh? You got so much food. And for the pepper. Peppers are usually her favorite. So it's so funny though, is she is obsessed with food. She loves food. And then whenever we give her her food, she likes to sniff it. And like, I've said this before, like I think that she enjoys like scent more than taste is what it seems like. She got one little freeze-dried raw. What are those, turkey or duck? Turkey. You guys hear the foxes in the background going nuts? Sound like monsters. Hey, calm down. Hazel, Hazel. Nice. You guys are being crazy. Go ahead, Kira. Come on, come on, Kira. Come on, up here. Come on. And this is why we're separating. Well, while you try to get them to eat, I guess this is a good time to show we did start construction on the other enclosure. So this is a 30 by 15 that they are in. 
and um, this door is actually going to connect them and this is another 30 by 15. So we can open the doors potentially and make this a massive 60 by 15 so they can still have like play dates and stuff but we're going to separate Kira and her boyfriend um, and not Kira sorry Hazel and um, maybe make a lockout for Hazel to eat, maybe try to feed her in a carrier or just see how she does. You can see these two, they share out of the same bowl. They're totally fine, but Hazel gets it's like, so crazy. Cra and she eats so fast. And again, we don't know if she was like in a cage and had her food stolen, we're not really sure. But I have to sit here and play guard the whole time because she will run up here and steal their food too. So that's why we feed these two up here her down there and I have to stand here the entire time and make sure she's not going to come up here and bully them. So these two females have bonded no problem. And so in foxes, it is apparently a known thing. Again, I'm no fox expert. So we are learning as we go. And this is what I'm learning from other people who are experts is that sometimes females bond up really well together as these two have, and they're fine. Sometimes they don't, as we see right here with Hazel. And so sometimes they will also bond a lot better with a male. So that's what we're hoping. So because she's so dominant, uh, we're hoping that we will be able to, sorry, not trying to block you. Uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to have her bond up with the male and that she won't bully him like she does bully the females. This is all theoretical. We don't really know what's going to happen, you know? So um, right now, this is not okay, though. So we do have to separate them. And so uh, hopefully it doesn't become a big issue like we get her with another male and then they hate each other too. <laughs> like, but this is what it is in animal care. Like, you don't know. There are no laws. There are no rules. There are no, like, this is exactly how it's going to work. It's chaos because a lot of people, um, they do ask me, I get a lot of comments and people expect it to work like that where it's like, this is this and this is this. It's like, no, these are individual animals with their own individual personalities. They do what they want and you don't know what they're going to do or what they want. And so we're hoping obviously that this will solve it. And after talking to experts, seems like the best move, you know, so that's what we're going to do, obviously, but we have no guarantees. So uh, we're hoping this is going to work out really well. Um, I don't know. What are we going to do if it doesn't? I think it will. I think. And I mean, if, if it doesn't, we just feed Hazel separately. Yeah, we do lockout. You know, because it, it seems like she's like crazy over the food, but I don't think she's going to get as possessive. Oh, wait, wait. She's, she's going to jump from the I log know. up there. Yeah, she's nuts, man. We can feed her in a carrier or do like a lockout or something for her. Yeah, I think but that's... I do think a male will be good for her. I mean, she sleeps on the floor by herself and Kira and Yue cuddle up here. Yeah. So they're definitely, you know, they're friends, they're bonded. It is interesting how much they like the platform. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know if they'd even like it, like, really at all very much. And they love it. They spend almost all their time up here elevated so they can look around and watch everything. That's really cute. Um, now, the male we're going to get is going to be uh, neutered. So we don't have to worry about offspring or anything like that. I misspoke on one of my other ones where I said that she was fixed. So the females are not, but the male will be. So just for, you know, clarification, correction on that one. Oh, did you show the new one? I did, yeah. Um, if they're done eating, we can... Yeah, they're done. Oh, is it empty? Yeah. We can take the bowls out just so they don't get crazy over the empty bowls. Being possessive? Yeah. So we'll just take the empty bowls out and... Where's Bambi? Bam! There she is. Bambi has been a very bad girl lately and she jumps on the golf cart and eats all the food when we're not watching. Yeah. So, this is the lockout, right? So we close this off. And then, this is not a door yet, but it will be. And so that way you'll be able to utilize this same lockout and go between either one or- And open the doors. We could open both doors. And then the animals can run between both enclosures, you know. So we're gonna we're gonna see how it works, you know. We're gonna see how it goes. But um, this is looking pretty good. 
I think it's so cool with all the little trees. You know, we might have to cut this one a little short, but that's not the end of the world. It's like perfect. It's like their own little forest, you know, with a bunch of like little trees and stuff. And we're gonna do platforms in here, just like the other one. It's gonna be literally the same exact thing. Um, I think we might have a little piece of the hollow log left over there. So maybe me and you can either try to move that or hollow it out or something. Yeah. Yeah, they don't use the logs as much as I had hoped. It's still new. It's yeah. still all new to them. I thought they would love that hollowed out log. Yeah, that's still new to them. Jet likes his. You Jet know. loves his. But, yeah, you know, figuring it out. They've never even seen a log before. <laughs> so, yeah. How long have we had them? Three weeks? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, Three so a month ago, that thing's never even seen a log. Yeah. You know, now it's got a hollowed out log. So, yeah, maybe they will uh, learn, you know, to utilize it and play with it more. So we're talking about putting a ramp in here and having the platform since they love it so much. But Gabby was saying, oh, what if we make a higher level for them? And I'm saying we probably shouldn't because they do jump off of this and they're pretty goofy and their feet and ankles are not properly formed by live because they were living inside these little tiny wire cages. And um, I, do, I mean, look at that right there. Like, you know, foxes are supposed to be agile. They should not be like out of control like the way that they are. They're really goofy in the way that they move uh, because of living in that cage like that you know living in these little tiny wire cages so will that change over time we don't know um we're thinking probably not right we yeah. asked yeah we asked uh, i mean it might improve a little bit but it's not like it's you know gonna be 100 percent normal ever yeah. they're gonna build up the muscle and like the joints and then we have them on joint supplements and stuff but look at oh she just jumped off <laughs> that was yeah. the most pathetic jump i've ever seen that's what i'm saying so we don't want them doing that from an even higher level with messed up joints and, and feet and whatnot and actually hurting themselves so. maybe we can put another slope down there too on the other side yeah there? well the thing is that that also allows only one access point when we are trying to separate them for feeding mm. so yeah i true. like this the way it is and so far they're jumping and it doesn't cause any problems i like having one access point so i can cut it off if i need to yeah um but yeah i wouldn't go higher because, you know, the aforementioned reasons. But, um, yeah, like, look at how goofy they are. A lot of people are asking if they can be cuddled and touched and pet. And... So far, no. Um, yeah, so far, no. I mean, we've pet them a few times, but, yeah, they're not. Oop, see, look, Hazel, there's not even food in bolt. And Hazel's over there pushing around Kira. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. What is she doing? What do you think, Kira? But, um, oh. yeah, hopefully, Clover's like, I want to play. Hopefully, uh, over time, they'll warm up to us more and we can actually cuddle them, but that's not an option at the moment, you know? Um, maybe, we'll see, you know? Again, we've had them for not even an entire month yet. Jed, we got food for you, Jed. We got some rabbit for you. Come here, Jen. Oh, we got some rabbit for you. Yeah. He's so cute. We got some rabbit for you. We've also got a toy for him. It's a cactus because he's from the desert. Apparently there are no cactuses in the Sahara, but it's okay. Well, there's definitely not saguaros. <laughs> is that what that is? Yeah. It's definitely none of these, but either way, whatever. It's a toy. Maybe he'll like it. Rabbit is the priority in his life. So, I assume after he eats all of his rabbits. It's just so funny when he came to us, they're like, he's so picky. He won't eat anything. Well, I mean, if I was only eating... Well, he is picky. He only eats rabbit. <laughs> yeah. What but are you if saying? If I was only eating frozen, frozen veggies and dog kibble, I, you know, I'd be pretty picky. I wouldn't like that. Yeah, he is very There's always picky. other options. I mean, even our kawadis, not all of them like raw meat. So, we do the freeze-dried raw. And there's just, I feel like there's always other options. They really like the freeze-dried, like, little fish and sardine snacks and stuff. So you just got to get creative, you know? The Stella and Chewy's, the freeze-dried raw has kind of been a lifesaver. Because even Asami, that's how we're getting a lot of her protein in, too. Because she's kind of picky. She loves her veggies. She's in the background eating. She's so funny. You're eating the pepper? Yeah, she loves pepper. It's funny, though. Like, you go above and beyond feeding them. And it's really amazing. Or psychotic, depending on, you know. I think it's a little bit of both. <laughs>
That's what we say about the Kaladis. It's like that that's a glorified raccoon that we're giving gourmet meals to. Like it's a trash panda. No, it works. I mean, it gives me purpose and like I'm I a little obsessive. I'm just you a hard time. I know, I know. I'm a little obsessive and crazy, so like it's it's good. I put it to good use. <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate it. I mean they seem like they they love all the food. Is he still just eating his rabbit? No, he grabbed a bug there. He likes insects. An apple. No nope, bugs. Yeah, they definitely... He prioritizes the meat for sure. Yeah, he loves rabbit, but he really likes insects too. See, he loves his little hollowed out log. Yeah, he does. Scoop in some kawadi poop. Now that it's not as wet, you see how much easier it is to keep it clean? Yeah. When it was raining, it was I was like bleaching it every day. It was just becoming a mess, like yeah, a muddy, well, poopy mess. This is supposed to be the drier time of year too, so wait till the summer. Yeah, I know. It's gonna be raining every day. But we have our volunteer coming tomorrow, and then I have a friend on Thursday who's coming and she wants to help clean, so maybe we'll just deep clean and bleach everything. It's really not that dirty, but uh, we like to keep things really, really clean, so we'll just probably bleach everything either tomorrow or Thursday. Why do they keep on pooping in their box? Uh, I don't know why they would poop where they sleep. I don't understand that. They're pretty smart little critters, and this I don't understand. It's probably Lily. Okay, so we got all the poop cleaned up. So we put some toys out in the uh, frozen enrichment. I think they'll have fun with this, and oh, you got a little TV remote thing too. <laughs> yeah. So what, these are all baby toys? Yeah, these are all baby toys. I want to like physically hand Lola this one because I think she'll really like the phone. Mm. Okay. She's obsessed with phones. Do you want to try this phone? <laughs> she finally gets what she covets. Yep. Be careful. She gets really crazy over phones. She's been a little crazy ow, today. Ow, yeah. ow. The claws. Someone's calling your phone. What is that, huh?
<laughs> She's destroying that thing so fast. That didn't last very long. Lolo, right? Do you see how easily she's just ripping that out with her claws? <laughs> yeah, they're so Leave strong. It too easy for her. <laughs> she just ripped that right out. give it to them. I know. They're like, I don't want that. They only want what they can't have. Blanco, you want to try? Blanco. Here, you want that? Nope. And stolen. He likes the rainbow ones. You like that? You like that? All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and let Lily out. Um, we kept her locked up because she's the only one that's actually dangerous towards us. So we kept her locked in while we were doing all that. So we're going to let her out now. She's just walking away. Here's one toy. She's looking at it. Oh, she picked up a toy. Yeah. Wow. Here, come out. I'm here on the outside. You see better. She's carrying it. Is she going in her house? She may be bringing it in her house. Here. You have a toy, Lil? Yeah. Well, I'm just checking out the other toy. All right, so we are letting the goats out. We've never done this. Before. We've never done this. We're gonna let the goats out to graze. I think you have to distract the pigs, and I have to get Kit Kat. Okay. Well, why don't we just try the two? Um, I think Kit Kat's gonna be very sad. Are we swapping? Okay. Oh, 
Yeah. You're being climbed. Yeah. You're being goaded. That wants to come out. Ladies and girls. All right, okay. All right, well, they're out here. Gabby just put some food down. So we're gonna let them eat some of that and see if they want to graze. And then the fun part is trying to get them back. They won't leave each other, and I know that Nilla 100% will follow me for food. And Toffee's gonna follow Nilla. I think you're right. This is a big deal. We've never done this before. Where's Kit Kat? So, how's that going? You gotta shake it, get him back to you. Come on, girls. Come on. Come on, let's go eat some grass. What about Kit Kat? Come on, Kit Kat. You got a chicken. I don't. Yeah, that's your only power right there. Oh my god. All right. We got all the good. You're gonna lose it. You're gonna lose it. Nope. Oh, Kit Kat's making a run for it. Kit's not gonna get very far with three legs. <laughs> All right, come on. Okay, let me clip. Well, come on, guys. Are they excited? Oh, yeah, look at them. They're so excited. I know. I want you guys to eat the grass. The grass. Come on. All right, come on. Kit Kat. Chaos, guys. Chaos. Clover's just like, chase me, chase me. I'm trying to play with those goats. I'm trying to play with those goats. Is it still pellets or they're eating? I don't know. They're rummaging. Well, the goats look very happy. Oh my gosh, Nilla. Is that playing or? I don't know, that didn't look like Oh, poor Kit Kat with her three legs. <laughs> Clover wants them to play so much. You better calm down, Petunia. See that? That's like super not friendly pig behavior. Julie! Come here, Julie. Look, look we, got, we got stuff for you. Oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? Oh. What do you think? Nope. <laughs> Petunia, what do you think? Tony, look. Look at that. No? That's good stuff. There you go. Hi, Daisy. Hi, Daisy. There 
you go, Daisy. What do you guys think? You like the enrichment? There you go, Tony. Julie, look, what's this? What's this? She's the least impressed. Hi, Julie. Hi, big girl. Hi, big girl. You like the ice? Not for you? Petunia likes the ice. With this big mohawk. Look at this thing. It's a big handle. When you're trying to kill me. It's like a, like a big stiff broom right on the back of his head. Hi, Daisy. Can you try the ice? Man, I'm really surprised. They're not like totally obsessed with the ice. Yeah. They're push on me more than the ice. <laughs> You're gonna flop over? Yeah. Oh, timber going down. I'm going down. Oh. You wanna lay down? No, you're fighting. There you go, Daisy. No, oh, I'm being nice now. I'm being nice now. I wish my arm was longer. But now Petunia's actually been pretty good. And if you haven't seen it before, I have posted videos of Petunia, like, actually trying to get me and, like, jumping up and trying to tusk me in the face and all that kind of stuff but right now being pretty nice and pretty sweet i don't know maybe it's like a seasonal thing because like lately between has been pretty nice with me um i don't know i don't know what causes sometimes just like the mood swings and being more aggressive and then right now i'm being pretty nice pretty sweet but i don't know <laughs> when it's bad it's pretty bad though pretty dangerous Enjoying your outside time? Yeah. You, sir, what are you doing? Oh, this big Turk Turk. What you doing, big guy? Hmm? What are we doing? You over here hanging out? Yeah. Look at him, he's so funny. You got some Spanish moss stuff to you. You hanging out? 
That's all he does all day. I'm gonna nail a climb in the tree. Look at them there. They have any, even, even three legs over there, getting up <laughs> on the tree. Look at that. You would never know. Look at them, they're so funny. They're loving this. So this is a really big deal. I mean, when we first got them, they were terrified. I mean, if you haven't seen me talk about it before, you know, Kit Kat came to us um, after being mauled by a dog and getting a leg removed and we paid for the amputation surgery before we even got her. And then the other two, uh, Nilla and Toffee, were dumped at a casino and were like 90% sure they were gonna be sacrificed for Santeria. It's really prevalent in that area. If you don't know what that is, it's like this crazy uh, voodoo kind of thing where they sacrifice animals all the time. When I go out down south uh, in Miami looking for pythons, we find sacrificed animals all the time. Like, I mean, literally hang them upside down, slit their throat, put a bunch of coins on the ground and spells written down. Like it's pretty awful stuff. And they have entire pet stores dedicated to selling sacrificial animals down there. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go down the rabbit hole too far, but that was their destiny, we're almost positive. It was in an area where we see that kind of stuff a lot, so. Yeah, so they were picked up by the Miami um, Horse SPCA and then they came to us. Yeah, so when they first came, though, they were terrified, couldn't get near them. Uh, they were scared of everything. So now, look at them. You know, we got them out here, and they're having a great time. Um, although, maybe it was freaking too soon, because we have not tried to put them back yet. I think they're going <laughs> to follow us for pellets. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. Look at all of them. They are, they are just so happy. They're getting the idea, finally. Foraging and eating the grass and everything. Yeah, they, they look super happy. All right, so this went really well with them. They seemed like they really enjoyed it. Now the part that is most difficult. Oh, try to put them back. You gonna follow me? Okay, hold that door. Okay, I got it. Run. All right, all right, all right. Everybody watch out. Daisy. Daisy Pig, you gotta go back in. <laughs> Daisy, come here, Daisy. Come on. There you go, Daisy. Come on. Oh, go pig, Daisy. Can you sit? Can you sit? Go pig, Daisy. Does Julie sit yet? I haven't tried to teach her, actually. I'm all off now. Yeah, I'm sure she'll pick it up real quick, though. All right, that went really well. Yeah, <laughs> like, that went really well, actually. Nobody made a run for it. Um, as I know people ask, what would you do if they ran? Or aren't you worried about coyotes and bears and panthers? It's, no, guys, look behind. We have an eight foot fence. That is our perimeter fence. That is um, a class one uh, animal fence. I'm forgetting my terminology. But um, yeah, so this is uh, 
specifically for a uh, game. And this is built to keep everything exotic we have in and other stuff out. So um, this is enough to stop a Nile crocodile. So uh, yeah, they're, they're not getting out. <laughs> All right, so it's about 5 p.m. and uh, we're just enjoying some dinner slash breakfast slash lunch uh, on the swing because this is the first meal of the day for me. <laughs> it's been a very, very uh, long, busy day today, just running around nonstop. So it's really nice to take a moment, actually eat food, and then enjoy the view, enjoy the property, you know, being down there. But uh, yeah, we have to make ourselves sit down and enjoy ourselves because it is so overwhelming and just so busy all the time and you're just run 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 and uh i again it's 5 p.m it's the first time i've eaten today and uh just it's it's chaos you know so like doing this whole sanctuary thing is really difficult it's a lot of work a lot of time um and you don't even get to enjoy the beauty of what's going on around you you know i mean obviously i enjoy hanging out with the animals but got to make time to sit still enjoy the moment and then we're trying to sit on the swing and have a nice little romantic outdoor dinner. And then there's just the heavy, murderous breathing in the background. You sound like a serial killer, just waiting. Why are you like this, huh? Well, that is what they do. He's a Muscovy duck male. And this is just kind of their thing. They make that sound. And it's what they do all the time. Sam's not a fan. You hear her growing up. <laughs> 